Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I am doing another Manga Monday recommendations video. This is the second in a series. I'm going to be posting every second and every fourth Monday recommendations of manga based on a topic or theme. Um, I am going to be posting those themes ahead of time so if you want to participate and make videos or blog posts or whatever else you're welcome to do that. Um, I did have a few people who said you were interested so that is open to you. There's also uh, information on how to participate if you're interested in any of that. If you have questions that probably will be answered there but feel free to send those my way or if you have recommendations for uh, possible future themes you can send that my way as well. Um, nothing is really set in stone at this point so I would love to hear any recommendations you have. So today I'm going to talk about short shonen manga. Um, this was a suggestion from a viewer so thank you so much for that. Um, it is an interesting topic suggestion because it really is uh, really hard to find, at least in English publishing. I think that shonen manga is primarily dominated by long sports and long battle series. Um, you know, I know that when I ask someone in general, like, what are their favorite series or what are the series you think of when you think of manga, the first titles that they're going to come up with are these really epic, you know, sports and battle series like Naruto and One Piece and Dragon Ball. Um, those are the things that you think of first, or at least the general population, in my experience, thinks of when they think of manga, just in general. So they dominate that demographic, or they dominate that area of publishing, and it is hard to find things that are shorter to read. You know, sometimes you don't have the time to dedicate to those long series, or you don't have the finances to collect those kinds of series. So I really appreciated this um, suggestion or request, but also I found it really difficult to come up with recommendations. Um, I did go through all of the shelves in my room and I pulled off um, all of the shonen manga that were at least three volumes or less, um, so I really wanted to pick really short series. Um, so I am eliminating some of the middle range series. There are a few in that middle range series, uh, somewhere between four volumes and like 15 volumes, um, so I have eliminated those. And I also um, made sure that they were titles that I well, have read for one, but also have rated at least three stars on Goodreads because I want to recommend to you titles that I at least like. Um, so that is sort of another kind of condition for this. So I'm going to go through this list. I'm going to start with actually my favorite because I know a lot of you will click off of this video and if you take anything away from this video I want you to pick up this particular title and that is Koa by Akira Toriyama. This basically is a younger demographic. Um, it definitely is closer to maybe a middle grade age readership um, but it's really an all ages manga. I think anyone would be entertained by this. Even adults could be entertained by this. Um, it stars uh, two ghosts, or I mean two monsters, um, the half vampire, half were koala, which is where the title comes from, koala. Um, he and his best friend Paifu, who is the ghost up there in the corner, they go on an adventure. Um, basically, they are trying to rescue their monster village. Everybody has contacted the flu, and it's a very serious flu, and everyone might die. So they have to go on this adventure and get medicine in order to save everyone. Um, they are accompanied by a a recluse who lives in the woods, a human who is an ex-wrestler who kind of helps and aids and guides them on their way. It is so fun, it is so engaging, it is uh, totally adorable, the art in it is fantastic, the characters are wonderful, it is one of my favorite things to read, actually. Um, I absolutely love this title and I would highly recommend that you check it out. A bonus feature of this particular manga is that um, you know, it looks like a standard Viz publication, but actually the very first uh, chapter is actually printed in color, which is very unusual, and it's actually printed on the same paper that the rest of the manga is printed in. It's not on that high gloss paper, so there is a full color chapter in this particular manga that you are missing out on, and it is wonderful. A really good rule of thumb in order to get into long series is to look for short series by that mangaka. So if you're looking to get into Dragon Ball or Dr. Slump but you see it's really long, you want to maybe find out about that particular author, Koa is a good choice. Um, Akira Toriyama also has two more titles which I actually think are some of my best recommendations in this video so I'm going to go with them as well. 
and uh, the first one is Sandland, which is a really similar concept to Koa. The uh, demons and a human are traveling across the desert looking for water to help save the demon village. I think that's what the concept was. Um, really similar concept to Koa and just as fun. Um, it's a little bit more predictable, I think, than Koa was, but it's still a really solid story in a single volume and the characters are really engaging and fun. And um, maybe a title that you would read after you read Dragon Ball Z, I would recommend Jacko the Galactic Patrolman. I believe this character actually is appearing in Dragon Ball Super, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's uh, what I saw. Um, and this is basically the story about a kind of bumbling uh, police officer from outer space who is coming to Earth. He ends up crash landing on a deserted island, but he's supposed to assess the Earth whether or not it should be allowed to continue or it should be destroyed. Um, so he ends up crash landing and he ends up meeting, again, a recluse who ends up sort of guiding him on his adventure. It's also really funny, but I think it takes a lot of its humor um, or humor nods that uh, point towards Dragon Ball Z. So if you read Dragon Ball Z first and then read this, you'll really get, I think, a little bit more out of it. Plus there are some storyline crossovers, which are really enjoyable. So I would also highly recommend this as a short series to get into. It's only single volume. Two more titles also published by Viz is Shonen Jump. One's a Shonen Jump and one's Shonen Jump Advanced. Um, the first one is Gunblaze West. This is by Nobuhiro Watsuki, who is the same author as Rurouni Kenshin. I know he's come under fire le recently, um, but this is a pretty decent series for what it is. It is a short, complete, in three volumes, and um, when you're reading it, it really will remind you probably the most of One Piece. It feels like the Western version of One Piece. It actually is set in North America, which is quite a, kind of enjoyable. Um, it stars a uh, single boy and he is on a journey to Gunblaze West. It's sort of this legendary town or location. Um, and that's basically the story. I think One Piece is probably sums it up, except for you know how epic One Piece is. It continues on into the volume 80s. Um, and Gunblaze West is complete in three, so you'll get kind of a taste of what that story is um, in a really short series. And it's really interesting seeing or reading something that is actually set in North America, because this is not a perspective you get very often in manga. Another title that you might be interested in, also by a long and popular series, but this one is still in print, this is Barrage by Kohei Horikoshi. This is the same author as My Hero Academia. Um, this one is a fantasy. Um, it is sort of set in a medieval type world, and it really plays off of the idea of the Prince and the Pauper. So if you're familiar with that story, which I'm assuming you are, um, that is sort of how this story is built. Um, it's primary theme is about family and the importance of family, and so um, that is really what your message is going to be in this. Um, it is only two volumes long, and I think that this will probably come under fire because it isn't as engaging as long series, um, but it only has two volumes to work with, and so I think actually as a two volume series that actually is a battle manga, or an adventure type manga, it actually does pretty well with the time constraints that it has on it. So, um, you know, it's not my top pick definitely for this list, but it is certainly um, an interesting choice and it'll give you kind of a look into um, the writing and the art style of Ko Kohei Horikoshi, as well as maybe give you a taste of um, an interesting folktale that actually gets represented or a theme that gets represented in manga quite often, which is the Prince and the Pauper where um, a pauper character ends up having to take place, take the place of the prince uh, during a really hard time in their kingdom's history. Uh, that's basically what this is about. Um, another title I would recommend, um, probably more so if you're interested in uh, shonen manga that was closer to like a silent voice, um, and that is Someday's Dreamers. This is a two volume long shonen manga. This is by Norie Yamada and Kumichi Yoshizuki. Um, there is actually a companion story that uh, comes after this that is called uh, Spellbound. 
uh, Someday's Dreamer Spellbound. Um, this is basically the story of a young girl who has um, magic abilities. She is going to take a magic test and she's essentially apprenticed to a magic user um, in order to kind of prove her magic and sort of gain a little bit of skills in order to pass the test and kind of move on to her next grade or to be able to begin training. Um, it is a definitely more of an emotional story, more about character story and kind of healing people's hearts, so it, it is probably a wider appeal than the sports and battle series and adventure series. This is a quiet series um, and it really is a story about uh, kind of finding strength within yourself and um, healing the hearts of people and not getting stuck in the past. I think that's probably what this is going to do. It's only two volumes long, but it is so successful in its storytelling and in, in including a lot of emotional impact in a very short period of time. So I actually think this one is really worth picking up um, if you're interested in a different side of shonen manga. This is certainly not uh, the typical or most kind of anticipated side of shonen manga. This isn't what you think of first when you think of shonen manga, but um, it definitely is. So I would recommend this if you have a chance to pick it up. Only two volumes. Uh, Spellbound, which actually comes after this, uh, is five volumes long. Also a really good read. And that's all I have to say about manga that are only three volumes or less long. Um, but I do have a couple of other recommendations of series of short stories, which I think are really worthwhile. And you don't have to buy the whole thing, you don't have to collect the whole series, but they're worth reading. So I'm going to add this into this uh, video as well, because they are technically short, uh, short manga. You don't have to invest a lot in them uh, to get a really good uh, taste of the story of the writing. Um, the first one is Kitaro. Now Kitaro has been published, I think uh, the fourth volume is already out, the fifth volume is I think on its way, um, and you don't have to read all of this. It is all short stories, it's curated stories, it's not sequential, so it is stories about uh, Kitaro who's this little character on the cover. Let's see, you can see him more here on the back. Um, he is a ghoul, I would say. Um, or yokai. He is uh, missing one of his eyes, which you don't normally notice, and uh, you can see here maybe at just the very top that's his father who is his eyeball or lives in his eye socket, so um, they kind of have adventures together. It really is him kind of coming into contact with a number of different yokai or Japanese monsters and them trying to either defeat him um, and usually he gets into sticky situations with them, so it's they're short stories. It really is a very different perspective to modern shonen manga, um, but there's that still fun um, adventure aspect to it. And the one thing that I must say about Shigeru Mizuki is that his art is so beautiful. Like he he draws these very cartoony, very kind of limited, rendered figures, but his backgrounds are so highly detailed. And even though, you know, he's drawing something that's I, in a way for kids, I don't think all of his stuff is for kids, but um, it definitely has a childish appeal. Um, you should really spend some time and just look at his backgrounds because they're incredibly beautiful. Um, if you wanted to pick this up though, I would highly recommend you check out Birth of Kitaro. This gives, um, of course, Kitaro's origin story as well as the origin story of some of the main players that uh, reappear in the Kitaro stories. So this is a good first curation. Um, if you're not interested in reading more, you don't have to read more, but I think it's actually worthwhile picking up. It gives you a taste of the history of shonen manga, and it's it's enjoyable. At the very least, the art is astounding in it. So um, I would highly recommend giving Kitaro a try. And the last series that I have to talk about is Gone, which is a seven volume series, but again it is just short stories. It doesn't have a continuing plot line um, as far as I know. As far as I remember, I don't think it did have a continuing plot, plot line. Um, but basically it is the story about this dragon here on the cover, or dinosaur, um, Gone as in Dragon. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where the name came from. And he is a delightful little guy um, who just goes on adventures. It is it is an entirely wordless comic. There are no words in this comic. <laughs> I keep dropping books, so hopefully uh, you're not 
being too distracted by that noise. Um, he is uh, just having an adventure. He's experiencing nature. Sometimes he's in the forest. Sometimes he's on the ocean. Um, and usually he's getting into trouble um, just sort of to enjoy himself. He wants to eat something or he wants to ride the back of some animal or he wants to, you know, go for a swim. Um, usually he makes other animals really angry and causes problems. Sometimes he helps out animals and they really love him. It's just animal-ish behavior with a really fun uh, protagonist who's just an animal. Um, and it's really, really enjoyable. Um, of course, super easy to read. If you were looking at like what manga you could buy from Japan, this would be one because you can read it already. You're not going to miss out. Um, I don't even, I don't even think there are sound effects in this. So, you know, if you were looking at buying this manga, you don't even have to worry about trying to translate it. Um, I do have volumes of this in Japanese as well, and it has been published by multiple publishers. So, um, I have several different, uh, editions of this in my collection. Um, it is highly enjoyable. Doesn't matter what volume you pick up, you're going to enjoy it. And um, you don't have to buy the entire series. I suspect you might want to though after you really get into it, but um, really, really fun to read. So these are the titles that I recommend to you. They're all short series. They're all under three traditional size volumes long. They're all interesting titles that I would definitely recommend checking out, or at least giving a try. Um, my favorite, and the one I think you should start with though, is Koa. Um, definitely, please go and check that one out. But we also have Sandland, Jacko, Gunblaze West, Barrage, Some Days Dreamers, Birth of Kitaro, and Gon. Um, any of these titles are worth picking up. Um, at least to some degree. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I would love to know if you have any recommendations for short shonen manga, um, especially on the very short end because there is significantly less of that in my collection and um, that might be maybe more what I'm willing to collect at this moment than long series as well. So I would love to get your recommendations for that. That would be amazing. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.